Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. This is AP Physics Chapter 5, Applying Newton's Laws, Video 4. Today's topic is Frictional Forces, Kinetic and Static, Part 1. The objectives are know the cause of friction. Friction and normal force are really components of a single contact force. Understand the difference between kinetic and static friction. Be able to Applying Newton's laws to solve problems involving friction. Friction. Friction can keep an object from moving or slow its motion. The direction of friction force is opposite of the direction of the motion or tendency of motion. Lubricant are used to reduce friction. Let's take a look at a picture. Friction is caused really on a microscopic level even smooth surfaces are rough. They tend to catch the clings. So the little, just because of roughness of the surface, that's a cause of friction. Friction is just one force. Okay, it's one contact force that has two components, the normal force and the friction force. So friction and normal force are really components of single contact force. Kinetic and static friction. The kind of friction that acts when a body slides over a surface is called kinetic friction. Kinetic friction force is denoted by Fk. The magnitude of kinetic friction force can be represented by the equation Fk equals mu k times n. So in this equation, Fk is kinetic friction. Mu k is a constant called coefficient of kinetic friction. Mu k depends on the type of surface because it is a ratio of two force magnitudes, Fk over n. Mu k is just a pure number without units. The equation is only an approximate representation of a complex phenomenon. As a box slides over the floor, bonds between the two surfaces form and break, and the total number of such bonds varies. Hence, the kinetic friction force is not perfectly constant. The kind of friction that acts when a body does not move at all, when being pulled or pushed over a surface, that a force is called a static friction force. We use Fs to represent static friction. So we use this equation. Fs is always less than or equals to mu s times n. That means Fs can change, but there is a maximum value. It equals to mu s times n. In this case, mu s is coefficient of static friction. Noting both equations. Uh, both equations represent relationship between magnitudes only, not vector relationship. So this F and n are not in the same direction. It's magnitude only. n is always perpendicular to the plane. Fk or Fs is in the direction opposite of motion or tendency to move. Transition between static and kinetic friction. So here is a box just sitting on the surface. There is no applied force, so there is no friction. Fs equals to zero. When you start to apply force, Weak applied force, box remains at rest. Static friction, Fs, is less than the maximum, mu s over n. So this is weak friction. So in this case, Fs equals to t. From here, t equals, uh, t, t equals to 0 until the maximum. This is the maximum. Stronger applied force, box just about to slide. This this static friction equals to mu s times n. This is a maximum static friction. Once they start to move, that friction will change into kinetic friction. So this part is kinetic friction. As you can see, kinetic friction is not a perfect constant value because microscopic levels, they constantly catch and uh, um, too many little bumps. Okay, so box slide at constant speed in this case, so the applied force equals to uh, kinetic friction force. Fk equals to mu k times n equals to t in this case. 
So as you can see, static friction, that means maximum static friction is greater than kinetic friction. And another thing is static friction changes. Let's take a look at this example. You are trying to move a 5 Newton crate across a level floor. To start a crate moving, you have to pull with a 230 Newton horizontal force. Once the crate breaks loose and starts to move, you can keep it moving at constant velocity with only 200 Newtons. What are the coefficients of static and kinetic friction? Well, this is talking about constant velocity, so you know you shouldn't use Newton's first law, right? This is identify. Set up is to draw the picture and a free body diagram. So this is a free body diagram before it starts to move. Maximum static friction. This is a free body diagram when it is moving. Since this is Newton's third law, so the force in the x direction equals to zero and force in the y direction equals to zero. Force in the x direction equals to zero, that means Fs max. The maximum static friction should be equals to T. Or the friction equals to T. In the y, n should be equals to W. We know the equation mu s equals Fs over n, mu k equals Fk over n. Since F equals to T, so for uh, static friction, we use 230 divided by 500. You have 0.46. For kinetic, you use Fk over N, which is 0 0.40. Evaluate. Looks like it is easier to keep the crate moving than to start moving, right? So the coefficient of kinetic friction is less than coefficient of static friction. That's so that makes sense. Another example. So in the previous example, what is the uh, friction force if the crate is at rest on the surface and the horizontal force is 50 Newton? Of 50 Newton is applied. Since it is at rest, so it's Newton's third law, uh, I mean first law, all the forces cancels out. So the static friction should be equals to the tension, the pulling force, 50 Newtons. So in this case, static friction is less than the maximum value mu s times n, which is 230 newtons. So that means the frictional force can prevent motion for any horizontal applied force up to 230 newtons. Next example. So in uh, minimizing kinetic friction. So in example 5.13, the last one, suppose you try to move the crate by tying a rope around it and pulling upward on a rope at an angle of 30 degrees above horizontal. How hard do you have to pull to keep the crate moving at constant velocity? Is it easier or harder than pulling horizontally? Assume we have the same question W equals 500 newtons and mu k equals 0.4. So let's sketch the situation and draw a free body diagram. So here's the situation. Free body diagram, you have W going down, you have friction going to the left, you have normal force going down and you have your tension. Since tension is at an angle, so we resolve tension into horizontal and vertical. Horizontal component of tension is T cosine 30. Vertical part of the tension is T sine 30. So in this case, it's also constant velocity, so we apply Newton's first law. That means all the horizontal force cancels out. Mu k times n has to be equal to T cosine 30. And n plus t sine 30 should be equal to w. So now you have two equations and two variables. So let's take a look. Uh, one way to solve it is to solve for n from the second equation, n equals to w500 minus t sine 30. Then we substitute this n into the first equation. Mu k, which is 0.4 times n, 500 minus t sine 30. That equals to t times cosine 30. You combine the t's and you should have t equals 188 newtons. Then you bring t to this equation, you solve for n equals to 406 newtons. So the normal force actually is less than the weight of the box because the vertical component of t pulls upward on a crate. <clears throat> That's why so supported part of the weight already. The tension required is a little less than 200 newtons. 
So make it a little bit easier to pull at an angle instead of to pull horizontally. Toboggan ride with friction one. Let's go back to five, uh, example 5.10. The wax has worn off and there is now a non-zero coefficient of kinetic friction mu k. The slope has just the right angle to make toboggan slide with constant speed. Derive an expression for the slope angle in terms of w and mu k. So it is constant speed. We know the direction is also constant. So this is Newton's first law. Draw a sketch of the picture of the situation, draw a free body diagram on the incline. X is parallel to the incline and Y is pointing up perpendicular to the incline. So this is a free body diagram. In this free body diagram, only the weight is at an angle. So we resolve weight in the horizontal W sine alpha in the positive X direction. W cosine alpha is in the negative Y direction. So because this is constant speed again, so we use Newton's first law. Oh, the force in the x direction equals zero. That means fk has to be equals to w sine alpha. In the vertical direction, n has to be equals to w cosine alpha. Since fk equals to mu k times n, so mu k equals fk divided by n. fk is w sine alpha, n equals w cosine alpha. W cancels out, sine divided by cosine is tangent. So mu k equals tangent alpha. Let's see what does this one mean. This means the weight W doesn't appear in this expression. That means any toboggan, regardless, regardless of its weight, slide down and incline with constant speed if the coefficient of kinetic friction equals the tangent of the slope angle of the incline. The greater the coefficient of friction, the steeper the slope has to be for the toboggan to slide with constant velocity. Another example, toboggan ride with friction two. So with the same toboggan now, except now you are sliding downhill. So because now there is acceleration, we use Newton's second law. So again, in the force in the x direction, sum of the force in the x direction equals mx. That means w sine alpha minus fk equals max. Sum of y still equals zero, so n is still equals w cosine alpha. w sine alpha minus fk, which is mu k times n w cosine alpha, that equals max over here. And we know w equals to mg. So we figure out A should be AX over here equals to G times sine alpha minus mu k cosine alpha because all the M cancels out. So let's take a look at this uh, uh, result. Does the result make sense? If alpha equals to 90 degrees, alpha equals 90, sine 90 equals to 1, cosine 90 equals to 0. That means A equals to G. This is free fall, right? Free fall just as we would expect. What if mu k equals to zero? Suppose there is no friction. Then a equals to g sine alpha, same as the frictionless example we did before. If a equals to zero, then mu k has to be equal to tangent alpha. This is also agrees with our previous uh, results. So it, it all works. Rolling friction. It's a lot easier to move a loaded uh, cabinet on a wheel. So the rolling friction is actually very, very small. So here is a, a last example. A typical car weighs 12,000 newtons if coefficient of rolling friction is mu r equals to 0 0.015, what is the horizontal force needed? So again, set up Newton's first law because constant st uh, speed identify, that's identify setup, free body diagram, uh, execute using equations. Okay, so you get F applied equals to 180 newtons. Evaluate. So looks like it required a force. Required a force is rather small. That is why it is possible to push the car by hand.
That's it for today. Thanks for watching.